Pittsburgh is in his way. Let's get into game one of round four here in L.A. Alex Underhill leading Raging Bull Gothitelle versus the Talon Flame Chien Pao. Right away, such an aggressive lead coming out from Zach. This Chien Pao, of course, can deal a lot of damage just on its own. And the Talon Flame, yes, you have this capability of Tailwind setting, but something like a Brave Bird or a Flare Blitz can also pressure a lot of damage. Of course, at this point, you are facing down a Fake Out over onto the opposing end of the field. And this Gothitelle now with the Shadow Tag is going to be trapping both of Zach's Pokemon onto the field at this point. So. Zach, you have to make the most of this lead, and you have to be a little bit worried of the Raging Bolt that's staring you down on the opposing end, because the Talon Flame would definitely not appreciate that. You do have the option to even just protect past this turn, though. You got the tell, swapping it out. I trapped your lead. I don't want mine, though. Whimsicott's coming in. Yeah, the Whimsicott will take the Got the Tell's place, so following turns, Zach is able to swap his Pokemon out. But for now, he had to keep these two in. Maybe Zach was totally okay with that. We'll see what happens. Alex deciding to Terrestrialize right from the jump. Turn one of game one, Terra Electric on that Raging Bolt, dropping the Dragon typing, so he's no longer weak to ice. Chien Pao does not go for the Icicle Crash. Instead, will protect. Talonflame protecting as well. And Sierra, this is the thing we call back to earlier on in the day. We talked about Talonflame. It's one of the only Pokemon this Electro Web's not going to hit. It's we say Wimps got the fastest Tailwind pranks the user. But Gale Wings Tailwind, you have priority while you have full HP, technically faster than the Whimsicott. And being able to protect past the Electro Web, that means your Gale Wings is still going to be intact because as soon as you take damage, you lose that priority going on forward. Wimps got hitting the field. You have the option of going for a speed or even just a, dam a damaging move into the opposing end. Facing down against the Chien Pao, normally if a Pokemon does lock into something like this Protect, a chance to Encore them and make it so they can't really do much going forward is definitely so tempting. But you can't into the Chien Pao due to its Dark type typing. It's going to be immune to any Prankster type move coming on out. Is Talon Flame though, with the priority that it has, it will be it will be at this point a match. It'll be the Whimscott moving first with that Tailwind. Yeah, Whimscott does go first. Talonflame actually using Tailwind after it there. So both both sides of the field at least have their speed doubled for the next four turns. So it's effectively the same thing. Unless Raging Bolt is going to lower their speeds with a Terra boosted Electro Web. He did he did knock out the Talonflame for full HP and bring Chien Pao's speed down by one. So now Zach is slower and his Focus Sash is broken. You do get the opportunity to bring something out here and a first chance to look at what Zach has in the back for his team. It is the Screamtail and the Zamazenta. The Screamtail is definitely not one known for its damaging capabilities, but instead being able to lock down with other moves of choice. Talonflame, it definitely hurts sometimes that, you know, it doesn't it's so have to, frail. It's so yeah. frail, but it does mean that you do get a chance to be pivoting it out. Booster Energy, of course, will be that speed going on forward. Sucker Punch is an option to kind of circumvent the speed drops. It's not like it's super effective into the either slot. So do you think Zach, does he maybe want to switch Chien Pao out to preserve it for later? Or is the damage already done? Like, just get some damage off before it gets KO'd. I mean, at this point, too, if you're swapping out to your Zamazenta and letting that take damage, that could definitely hurt. Now, Gothitelle joining the field. If you were thinking about that later down the line, well, I got news for you. Sucker Punch Raging Bolt will take quite well. But if we're going for another round of hit, that's just a straight disable into that Electro Web. He doesn't go for the Electro Web, though. Instead, smartly clicking Volt Switch so you can switch out Chien Pao way low enough for that Volt Switch to be able to knock it out. Zach is down to his last two Pokemon, and Alex gets to shirk the uh, the the Encore away, or the, excuse me, the Disable away by swapping out for later. Hey, at least you don't have to worry about the Shadow Tag at this point, because you're down to your final two Pokemon. Whatever's hitting the field stuck yeah. in there anyway. Yeah, Gothitelle has no ability at this point. <laughs> That one's a little bit tough. Whimsicott rejoining the field over on Alex's end. This Whimsicott and, um, and I haven't seen it in so long. I keep forgetting the Gothitelle coming on out. This point, too, will be facing down against the Zamazenta. The Whimsicott with something like this Encore, you have to be careful because trying to lock anything down can be so tricky. And the Screamtail, it's fast, but you cannot beat a priority Encore over on the opposing end. So you have to be so careful. And at this point, you did click Disable on your last turn. And the other thing that kind of hurts Zamazenta in this matchup, Alex Underhill has five special attackers. 
His only physical attacker is Karaidon, so that boost to your defense stat, yes, it helps body press do more damage for sure, but it's not going to help give you survivability because you're going to be getting hit with, you know, uh, psychic attacks from Gothitel, Moonblast, Whimsicott, and Fluttermane things. It's not going to help your special defense. The fake out will go into the Zamzenta, make sure it doesn't attack this turn, and then Encore is used into Screamtail, try to continue to force it to use Disable. At least at this point, that is the one and done. So it's definitely not ideal, but it does mean the Zamazenta can lock into whatever it wants and is not going to be at risk for just getting shut down over onto the next turn. It does mean if you are trying to go and take the KO on to this Whimscot over on the other end, it is Focus Sash, so you can't even hit a Dazzling Gleam, try and hit anything else. At this point, there's nothing else you can really do. So go off the tell. Oh, I can't fake out anymore oh, down the line. Out, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Zamazenta will at least take this first hit well. But again, Women's got down to Sash. Down to that focus Sash because Heavy Slam, based on, on uh, you know, size, obviously Zamazenta weighs a lot more than the Women's got, so it does a lot of super effective damage. Now he's been encored into Disable, but then also taunted, meaning you can't click Disable, and Zach can't switch out the Screamtail. Screamtail's going to struggle. I feel like this is a big case of uh, karma for Screamtail. The amount of times that you're just a nuisance to the opposing end of the field and Screamtail getting a little bit of a taste of its own medicine, of course, with Taunt shutting down, I mean, well, status moves and it being locked into one in that disable. The Zombicent has only taken a little bit of damage, but at this point, too, is Zach reading the team sheet, looking around things. I think a lot of the thought about this is whereabouts you're going to be heading into this in game two. I mean, you can... Make it through this one as well as you can. Just be hitting into some damage. But this Screamdale, it's definitely in a little bit of a world of hurt. Swap out on the Gothitelle. Karidon to make an appearance. Now Alex does reveal his fourth Pokemon here in game one, showing off the Karidon. He's in a really strong spot. Even with Limsicott at one HP, it's going to preserve it for the next turn by clicking Protect, making sure it does not take any damage, Screamtail has We're no struggling. choice but to struggle. It goes, <laughs> goes into the Protect, though. There's the worst struggle out there, but at least you're not taking the damage back on that turn, but the Temple up into that slot anyways. No damage being done on that turn. You will be ending your Encore this time around. Right on hitting the field definitely has a way to really be pressuring over onto the opposing end. At least you know you cannot get on court again. Whimsicott still has one more turn of that being disabled. Yeah, and even the, like, you, on Alex's side, it's a, it's essentially one Pokemon left. Like, yes, Screamtail does have Dazzling Gleam, which can do some damage, maybe get a quirky crit or something like that. But it's really not known for its damage yet, but it's all about the support. So if Alex focuses targets on Zamazenta, that's the key to victory. Looking at this here... You can't click that. You do have... But see your dismay. You are not able... <laughs> you are not able to click that one. We'll see the terrestrialization coming out, but because of the taunt, you are locked into the D-Gleam. But it is an opportunity to at least pick off the Whimsicott on this turn. As Terra Dragon coming on out. Definitely doesn't fare well going up with potential Moonblast coming out on the Whimsicott. But would definitely take something like a Flare Blitz or Flare player charge from that Karadon a bit better, though it's protecting this time. Yeah, Karadon, Alex, last couple turns has been playing pretty passively, but he wanted to make sure Whimsicott got stuck around long enough to reset the Tailwind up, making sure his Pokemon will outspeed on Zach's end. No damage on to Karadon since he protected, but this is actually pretty good for Alex because you get to swap in uh, the Gothitelle or Raging Bolt for free without taking damage. Yeah, you have the tailwind, you get on out of there, even if it is at the hands of being KO'd, and you get something back in. The Karadon did just protect on that turn, but you've also just gotten the Trastalization out of the way over on Zach's end, and the Raging Bolt rejoining. This is something that has access to, I don't know, a Draco Meteor that that Zamazenta definitely would not appreciate nonetheless. Yeah, it's looking really tough. As we talked about, Zamazenta helps the Terra Dragon helps against a lot of the uh, normal attacks out there, the regular elemental attacks, but it doesn't help against two dragon types because you turned yourself into a weakness, essentially. Yeah, it's a, again, it's a difficult, you're kind of in trouble either way because you definitely would not appreciate a fire type attack coming out from that Karaidon. 
Still another turn of the taunt. The Dazzling Gleam would be good for just a bit of damage coming on out as the Zamazenta wants to try and make sure it stays protected through this turn since that is the damage dealer, but instead a hit into the other slot. Flame Charge does not do a lot of damage on the, you know, the base power, and but importantly, it boosts your speed to make sure you continue to be faster. That's a crit on the Raging Bolt. He is holding the Assault Vest, so they kind of neutralize each other out. Alex, I think, took a little bit more damage than he wanted to on that turn as the taunt wears off. And at this point, too, the speed is over on the opposing end, and you have used your Protect, but the amount of damage that that, da that the Dazzling Gleam did into the Karaidon kind of caught me off guard a little bit. Of course, the Raging Bolt is the one that's really threatening now that Zamazento with the Draco Meteor, though it isn't the most accurate, so it does have a chance to kind of be shut down. But now that the Taunt has now been up, even if there is Tailwind on the other end, you did have that booster energy for your speed. So this Screamdell is actually still really fast, so that's a way to start getting a bit more back into this. This is being played really well. Yeah, Zach has decided to, to slow it down. Yes, he led Chien Pao Townflame, which is about as hyper offensive as you can get but one thing i knocked out he's like all right let's chill let's chill for a second let's let's protect let's try to let's try to wear these tailwind turns out on alex's side as well so alex will swap the gothitelle into that slot disabling raging bolt who wants to go or the draco meteor would be disabled but instead again the second time this game alex called the disable and clicked bolt switch and so nice because now when that raging bolt comes back out onto the field it will not have clicked into a move of any sort so there's nothing to be disabled at this right. point Crydon now can come back out and this is going to be again pokemon that can be pressuring body press not very effective because of the high defensive will still make this a three hit ko onto gothitelle but also notably only one turn of tailwind remaining over on alex's side of the board so once that is done, I mean, this screen tail is already so fast, but would be able to have a little bit more rain over the Zamazenta. Every turn at this point is so careful. It's nice that you've gotten rid of the Whimsicott, so you at least can't be shut down with those Encores, but you still have to be so careful when you're facing down the Gothitelle that has these taunts. But Alex does have to consider the Scream Tail now that it's not taunted, not Encored on its end. If you click Fake Out on this turn, you could also be in a really difficult spot from an Encore uh, or uh, on the other side. But the Scream Tail is still pretty healthy, so it's not like it's done. It hasn't really been threatened too much. Even the Flame Charge didn't do a lot of damage there. Double Protect, so make sure neither of the Pokemon get uh, get any damage on them. And remember, oh, actually, Gothel goes down with the critical hit. He wants to give himself the speed boost and bring Raging Bolt onto the field for free. Alex sacrifices his own Pokemon. Uh, my jaw just dropped. Your Tailwind is done, but he now you're right on. I mean, the last turn of Tailwind, the double protect on that so safe and if not you get a fake out on that turn now you have a speed boost over on the Coridon when Tailwind has ended and the Raging Bolt back on the field so that is not going to be a Gothitelle that can now be shut down by the screen tail over on to the opposing end here both of these last two Pokemon now that you've taken the self KO are pretty low on health and yes the screen tail it still does have this booster energy speed and it does threaten a good amount of damage with this dazzling gleam anyways it's going to be coming down to the speed interactions oh, these are built and if that speed boost was going to be enough over onto this Coridon to be able to deal that damage beforehand because we saw how much damage dazzling gleam did beforehand thunderclap this is going to be the first to be starting the wave though terra electric so it's going to boost it damage to its scream tail down to under half hp Coridon is faster the flare bits follow up scream tail lives on one hp Coridon takes the recoil damage dazzling gleam four times super effective into Coridon so Coridon is down but it does not do a lot of damage to with the Raging Bolt. It's gonna be all up to Zamazenta with this body press into Raging Bolt and Zach wins game one with two Pokemon that sat on the field forever and did nothing and he still won the game. Like Alex had so much going on for him in his favor, but Zach came away with the victory. He'll lead Talonflame Champau, like same again, why not? But Alex can switch up with Whimsicott and Raging Bolt. Again, a defensive lead coming out from Zach. Gothitelle not going to be making an appearance, at least in the lead over on Alex's end of the field. Instead, 
This Whimsicott can threaten damage or just be matching Tailwind over onto this turn and over on the opposing end as well. If all of a sudden this Talon Flame, you don't want to go for something, it's, it can definitely be taken hit from this Raging Bolt. We saw that the Electro Web was more than enough to just kind of take care of it last time around. So we might just see a Tailwind v Tailwind to be kicking things off on the first turn of the match and Terrestrialization on top. Yeah, this is the second game in a row that Alex will Terrestrialize Raging Bolt on turn one. Of course, you have that, like we mentioned, Ice Cream Crash from Champel. You don't want to take super effective damage. You also lose that super effective hit from Dazzling Gleam later on if the Scream Tail is in the back. This time around, Talonflame does click the Tailwind turn one. Ice Cream Crash, he gets a crit! Raging Bolt's down to like five HP, and he has a, he's not long for this match. Moonblast goes to Champel. There's also the chance at a flinch. That would be an absolute disaster for Alex if Raging Bolt does not move, but fortunately, Electro Web does go off, connects onto both of Zach's Pokemon, and claims a double knockout. It's who KOs instantly. One hit KO onto the Talon Flame. Zach already down to his final two Pokemon. And this is where in the first game I started to panic. I was not a believer. <laughs> but the Screamtail and the Zamazenta was able to do a lot of work. Matching the Tailwinds as well, making sure that's the, the one good thing that this poor Talonflame does before it exits this world. We'll make sure that going on forward that this Screamtail and even the Zamazenta can really, really pressure. This Raging Bolt has such a low amount of health after that critical hit as well. That is something that a Dazzling Gleam might be able to pick off. This doesn't necessarily have the most amount of damage, and it is a spread damage attack, but a Heavy Slam into the Whimsicott, and hopefully just enough into the Raging Bull could be away, or do, you know, Screamtail things, and not even click the attacking moves, but Whimsicott wants none of that. Yeah, I think that's Zach, that Zach's win condition is Screamtail things in this moment. Raging Bolt with the Terra, uh, the Terra Electric Thunderclap into Zamazenta. Does some solid damage. Screamtail tried to go for the Encore into Whimsicott, but it protected. That is an Encore that you can be going for again over onto the next turn, though. So the Whimsicott would either have to be swapping out or be trying to go for an, like a different priority move. But at that point, then you're still kind of locking yourself into a priority move at that point. It will just be a Raging Bolt that's gone. Now an opportunity to bring in something with a little bit more to it. There's going to be the adjustment, the flutter main going on into this. <laughs> Zach's always so expressive. Eyebrow goes up. Yeah, he was he was surprised. Flutter main made, made it into game two. That means that Alex has left something else at home. You would anticipate, obviously, Gothitelle, since he didn't lead it. You don't want to, you, you want to have Shadow Tag, you know, try to force them in from the beginning. So it's probably cried on in the back. With this Flutter main, it is going to be choice specs. And when you're going up against a choice specs Pokemon with something like the Screen Tail, this could be like your bread and butter. You don't even have to encore it. It encores itself, and you can disable the move and be set from there. So, how this is going to be navigated from Alex's end, looking ahead at the Screen Tail, and how he can try and shut it down is going to be everything. But instead, targeting into the Zamazenta, that's a failed encore into the Protect. But. That's going to be hey, yeah. <laughs> available on the other end, too. Yeah, Shadow Ball, though, will be super effective into Screwtail. Wow. Doesn't hang on at one, but still hangs on in the red this time around. Gets a special defense drop that doesn't really matter. Zach understands that was the play. If he could have kept Screamtail healthy at a certain point and maybe uh, s s locked the uh, the disabled first two games. But let's get into game three here. Raging Bolt Whimsicott, why not? Alex used that the last game around and it worked out well for him. Now Zach switching it up. Zamazenta Chien Pao instead of Talonflame. This is an adjustment that I like a lot more because you're not going to be losing a Talon Flame on the very first turn. That is for sure. It does mean that you cannot match a Tailwind over on the opposing end, but this Chan Pao can still be threatening in a lot of ways. A nice go crash would definitely do a lot of damage here, or even just the priority to make sure that, hey, you're not about to get a priority to first, especially since you would not appreciate a Moonblast coming out from that Whimsicott if it does decide to go on the offensive instead course with the Zamazenta since it does just get that defense boost to start 
and it has a high defense that you don't need to be setting up. You can just go on the offensive right away and start dealing some damage into the opposing end. Sucker Punch to start. Yeah, Sucker Punch brings Raging Bolt down to around 60% of its HP remaining. Finally, Alex does not terrestrialize turn one, so he kind of thought the Astro Crash was not going to come out, and he is rewarded for it by clicking Bolt Switch. He's able to keep his terrestrialization for later. Might want to use it on Coridon later. At least he has options now. It's whether it would be rewarded, but I believe a body press into this slot is going to be a flutter main that is completely immune and gets in for free. And that is going to be a flutter main that can definitely pressure going on forward. Alex did set tail in on the very first turn with a whimsicott. So the whimsicott can now be pressuring and can fire off an attack into something like the Chien Brout, break the sash, and the flutter main can just go off from there. Even something like a Dazzling Gleam from a Choice Specs would do a lot of damage. And there's nothing really on the opposing end to be kind of shutting that down, at least in the way of the damage you can do. The Chien Pao can still, can still um, hit you with a priority attack, but depending on how it's built, especially too, if there is Trastalization, could be a little tough. And now Zamazenta is no choice but the Body Press going on forward. Really smart play from Alex, because if you Encore it into Body Press 1, Fluttermane's immune, obviously, as he brings Champ out down to 1 HP. But also, you can't Heavy Slam your Fairy types on the field. That would obviously be taking so much damage from the Heavy Slam. Here's the Icicle Crash landing onto the Fluttermane. That is a one-hit KO. So Fluttermane is no longer here in this game three. He's got Raging Bolt, and we presume Coridon in the back on Alex's end. Body Press still does a lot to Whimsicott, since you have the plus one boost, and Whimsicott really not too bulky. Uh, but it is I, I did really like forcing him to Body Press, because now you know at least like kind of what Zach's game plan is next turn. Yes and no, because sure, now he can't Heavy slam the flutter main. Okay, well, the Chien Pao with an icicle crash it took care of that. We don't have to worry about that problem going on forward. It does mean that you can no longer go for something like a protect, which I think is going to be nice. You do have the opportunity to maybe swap if you're not really enjoying the amount of damage you can be doing on the opposing end here. But now that you're facing off against something like this Coridon, even a body press would still do a nice little chunk of damage. And you already saw that the amount it did onto the Whimsicott. If you hit into that slot again, it is sure, that, I mean, not surely, like it just. Lefado does just take that KO. So body press not necessarily the worst in terms of the offense of something to be locked into. It's all about how you're going to be weathering these turns of speed that Alex still has since he did get that tailwind. And now terrestrialization that'll be into the dragon type. So that is definitely a way to try and get through these turns, making sure it's no longer weak to the fire types attack from the restricted over on the other end. So we'll see if Alex makes an adjustment. Still no Terra here on his side did not match the Terra Dragon from Zach. Sucker Punch from Champau will fail on this turn. And Crydon goes for the collision course into the Dragon type now on Zamazenta. He's got such a tanky defense stat as well. And he's going to respond with a body press that does like 90%. Maybe 80%. I might have went a little too far. It did, it did way more yeah. than the Zama, than the, it did yeah. to the Zamazenta, that was for sure. That was not a fair damage trade whatsoever. I believe it's only just one more turn of this Tailwind left. Whimsicott did protect the last turn. The Chien Pao does have this priority still to try and target into one of these things, but there is still the potential of just a swap out or even protect over on the other end. It will be the Whimsicott swapping, though. Well, if Alex is going to come back in this game, he's going to have to pull some fancy tricks. He's going to have to earn this victory in round four because Zach Thornburg is in the driver's seat right now. Sucker punch from Chien Pao did target that Whimsicott so it will fail on this turn. What does Crydon go for? It's the collision course yet again into the plus one defense of Zamazenta. Not enough. Hangs on with nine HP. Responds with a body press, KOing Crydon. Alex is down to his last two Pokemon, which we know Whimsicott is essentially in Sucker Punch range or body press range. So Whimsicott doesn't have a lot of turns left, but crucially can Tailwind if he wants to regain the speed. You have the option of that speed going on forward, and it's that has to be punch. the that is the, be the first part of this. But you're looking; there's still two more Pokemon that Zach has in the back: the Talonflame and the Screamtail that we haven't seen, and the Raging Bolt. If you want to go on the attack, 
I mean, that is still something that you can get sucker punched into, and it being a priority move from the other end, yeah. no chance. So that point, towel being thrown in. What an up and down from all three of these games. Yeah, that was an incredible set. Alex reading the cards. He's like, all right, I can maybe try this and this. And then, no, it's probably not going to work out. Zach played really well.